just a moment. This is uh, part two of a three-part series of chapters from Canto 10, chapter 52, which follows chapter 51. Chapter 51 was, did you hear chapter 51 discussion? No? Yes? You did. Yes, sir. Yesterday, you heard it remotely. Back there, you heard? Really? Fantastic. No. Chapter 50 was the deliverance of Muchakunda. And after Muchakunda incinerated Kalyavana, Krishna went back on the battlefield and finished his three, Krishna and Balaram, just the two of them, finished three million soldiers. And they were then gathering up all the valuables from the dead soldiers, I guess, to take to Dwarka. Because earlier, before Muchakunda and Krishna had their interaction. Uh, Kalyavana was coming from the north with three million soldiers, and Jarasandha was coming from the east with 28 Akshohini divisions of soldiers, which is a lot of soldiers. Didn't do the math, but it's a lot of soldiers. Krishna said to Balaram, someone from the Yadu dynasty may be in danger, so you hold them off. I'll have Vishvakarma construct Dwaraka in a jiffy, and then I'll transfer all the Yadu dynasty and Vishni dynasty members to Dwaraka, situate them in their residences and then come back and we'll finish them off. So when Krishna came back, that's when he ran from the battlefield and Kalyavana chased him and he went into the cave. So Krishna came back to take the valuables to Dwaraka. And that's when Jarasandha came, Krishna saw him coming, Krishna and Balaram ran, Why did he run? He had, he had a, a pastime to perform. And the pastime was marrying Rukmini. It was time. And so they ran. They went up a big, uh, tall, tall, tall mountain, Prashravana mountain. Jarasandha couldn't find them. He lit the mountain on fire to smoke them out. And Krishna and Balaram jumped. How many yojanas? Ten yojanas. What's ten yojanas? It's 80 miles. You've seen any mountain that's 80 miles tall? And they jumped from that mountain. And immediately Krishna arranged for a chariot that went like the wind and take, took them swiftly to Dwarka. Then Balaram married Devati. Krishna married, Ruk well, Krishna is going to marry Rukmini. And that was, that was chapter 51. There was an obstacle to make things more fun. There's got to be an obstacle. The obstacles may look like it's not fun, but for Krishna it's fun. The obstacle was Rukmi who was the elder of five brothers and the elder brother of Rukmini. And he wanted, he had envy towards Krishna. He had envy towards Krishna. So he wanted that his younger sister not marry Krishna, but marry Shishupal. And poor Bhishmaka, he was 
stuck because he didn't want to intimidate his powerful, ambitious son, so he went along with it. But Rukmini wasn't ready to go along with it. So she sent a messenger, and we read the, the, the message, but that actually comes in this chapter. So in the course of the discussion yesterday, there was some talk about, or a question about, um, Ram and Sita's marriage. So it's a big f f festival celebration. In India, where's the big s festival celebration of Krishna's marriage? Because it's an important event. So just before coming here, um, Lal Gopal sent a message, and I didn't get the, the follow-up yet, but in South India, there's a Radha Krishna marriage festival, Kalyanam. And I didn't hear about that till I heard it from him. And I asked him, is this from Brahma Vaivarta Purana? So I'm going to show you some images from Brahma Vaivarta Purana in a moment. But I want to do this first. And you're just going to be a little patient, and I'll find something nice for you. Now I have to go over here, and here, users, Romapod, favorites, extras. Rindavan. Okay. I think you'll be happy. You waited a little bit. This is going to be nice. Okay. It says part two because it's three chapters, three consecutive chapters. Is the sound amplification on? Can you hear me okay? No. Can you do something with the volume? I'll keep speaking and you can just play with the volume. So the Brahma Vaivarta Purana... Brahma Vaivarta Purana tells a very nice story about Radha and Krishna marrying. Have you heard that story from Brahma Vaivarta Purana? Can you hear me over there? Can you hear me better now? Yes? Okay. Can you make the volume a little louder? You know how to do that? As you see from the painting, well, there's, there's the painting. It's uh, Nersananda Maharaj, 
And uh, Krishna, when he was just very little, he was very fond of the cows. So he went with Nanda Maharaj for herding the cows one day. And when they got some distance from uh, Nandagram, big storm came. That's where you see the tree bending in the wind and torrential rain getting ready to come down. Now we see Radharani's shadow, but it should be, it's raining. And Nanda Maharaj was very concerned about the safety of Krishna. And as he was very concerned about the safety of Krishna, he's also concerned about the safety of the cow, so what to do? Just at that moment, right on cue, Srimati Radharani, who was just a little younger than Krishna, but here she's shown, she, her body by yoga maya potency became larger and she came running to Nanda Maharaj offering, I'll take care of Krishna. I'll take care of Krishna and take him back to Nandagram and you can take care of the cows. And so he agreed. Then here's Krishna in his young form and here is Srimati Radharani. So as they, Radha and little Krishna, were heading back for Nandagram, Krishna became bigger, the same size as you see Srimati Radharani here. And Lord Brahma, this is from Brahma Vaivarta Purana, Lord Brahma came with many devas and they performed a marriage ceremony right there underneath a large tree. The rain stopped, the wind stopped blowing, and he had the pleasure and service of worshiping and marrying Radha and Krishna. When the marriage ceremony was over, they became small again. Krishna made his way safely back to Nandagram and at least in their child pastimes, married by Lord Brahma, unknown by everybody else, but married by Lord Brahma. And there's another nice uh, description. Can somebody read what this says? Priyakund. Priyakund. Priyakund is another name for the kund where um, Pili Pokhar is situated. Here's a photograph from one side. Here's a photograph from another side. And there's a nice pastime connected with Radha and Krishna's marriage. And the pastime goes like this. From the childhood of Srimati Radharani, Radharani had received a benediction from Durvasa Muni. Because Durvasa Muni came to visit in uh, Varsana and into the whole of the Vraj area. And everyone was like, uh oh, here comes Durvasa Muni. But Radharani was not afraid, and she cooked for Durvasamuni. She was very gifted in cooking, and Durvasamuni gave her a benediction. You please me very much by your nice service. The benediction, I give you two benedictions. Whoever eats your cooking will live a long life, and they'll be free from illnesses and they'll be very, they'll prosper in this life. And the second is whatever you cook, each thing you cook, it will be different. You'll never cook the same thing twice. Ladies, could you imagine that benediction from Dravasamuni? 
So Radharani was very happy. And she told her mother. And her mother, Kirti Da, had very good friendship with Mother Yashoda. So she shared what happened. Dravasamuni gave my daughter these two benedictions. So Mother Yashoda said, Oh, how wonderful. Since Dravasamuni has given this benediction, can you have your daughter come every morning and cook breakfast for Krishna before he goes out to take care of the cows? So of course she agreed. So that's how it started. That every morning, Radharani with her friends would go before the sun came up, before Krishna would go out in the pasturing grounds, she with her friends would make Krishna's breakfast. And Mother Dasoda made a special kitchen just for them so they could do their special cooking in the special kitchen for her special son. And Krishna became very happy taking Srimati Radharani's breakfast every morning. And in the course of those exchanges between Srimati Radharani and Mother Yashoda, naturally, the mother became very affectionate to this darling Srimati Radharani. And they would enjoy each other's company in a very transcendentally special way. So mothers do what mothers do. I have this wonderful son. Wouldn't Radharani make a wonderful wife when they grow up? And because in Vedic culture, the boys and girls would marry in an early age, and then later they continue living separately, And then, but they knew who they were married to, and then later they would live together when they were more mature. So she had that idea. So in fun, in a, in a joyful mood, Mother Yashoda placed Haldi on the hands of Radharani and, and laughed and said, you know what that means? Now what does it mean? It means you're going to marry my son. And laughter and laughter, it was, it was fun. Then Radharani was going back home, looking at her hands, thinking, what's my mother and father going to say? And her friends were with her, and they were teasing her and ta taunting her and saying, we know your heart, you, want, you, li you like this very much. Back and forth and back and forth. But she then said, you know, without the permission of my mother and father, I can't do this. I can't continue wearing haldi on my hand. So she went to this lake, which is near the bottom of Varsana, and heading in the heading back to Varsana from Nandagram. So she washed all the haldi or the turmeric from her hands, and when she washed all the turmeric from her hands, the lake turned yellow, and thus its name became Pilipokar. Now there's more to the story. She went back. By the time she reached her home, her mother and father already heard the news. You know how that goes. You can't hide the evidence. Her mother and father knew. They thought it was a great idea. And they thought, let's say yes. And so the way of saying yes in this culture at that time is they sent a gift. They sent a whole bullock cart load of valuables to Nanda and Jasoda's home to confirm we accept. When the card arrived, Nanda and Jasoda, they don't have the same kind of wealth that Kirtida and Vrishabhanu had. So they didn't know what to do. They said, before we can do anything, we have to ask. Who do we have to ask? Purnamasi. Who is Purnamasi? You know who is Purnamasi? Huh? 
Sandi Panimuni's mother, who is Yoga Maya personified, or the, the internal potency of Krishna for the purpose of orchestrating his pastimes. Personified is Purnamasi, who is the mother of Sandi Panimuni. Who is Sandi Panimuni? Sandi Panimuni? You've heard his name, right? Do you know who he is? Krishna's teacher, right? Oh, yeah. Krishna's teacher. Sandi Panimuni was Krishna's teacher. And Sandi Panimuni was a Brahmin. And his mother was Purnamasi. And Sandi Panimuni had a son. He had more than one son. But one of his sons came with Purnamasi and became one of Krishna's dear friends. And his name starts with an M. What's his name? Madhu Mangal. Madhu Mangal was the grandson of Purnamasi. So the way that things work in Vrindavan is you don't do anything, you don't make any important decisions without consulting Purnamasi because she was the one that everybody looked up to. And rightly so, because she's Yokamaya personified. So Nanda and Jasoda went and asked, what do you think? She said, no way. <laughs> because the pastimes of Radha and Krishna are supposed to be parakya, not in marriage. Now this is the Braj description, different than the Brahma Vaivarta Purana description and whatever they do in South India, where Radha and Krishna get married, no marriage. Purnamasi said it's inauspicious time, shouldn't go through with it. And so they put it off. And another description of this pastime, same pastime, is Krishna was searching for Srimati Radharani and he came p past this lake, Pilipokar, and this is a this is a a drawing from one of Shivaram Shiva Maharaj's books, where Krishna came, he saw this yellow color, and there's details and details and details. So he started wading into the lake, and his body became golden. So Krishna, with his body becoming golden, is who? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the mood of Srimati Radharani's love for Krishna. So you can read that in his writings. Now we're going back to Rukmini's marriage because this was all just a, in pursuance of is there not somewhere in India a wedding ceremony celebration as with Sita and Ram their wedding marriage celebration event honored by Vaishnavas. So Rukmini was a king's daughter and had the characteristics of a king's daughter. She was courageous and bold and she would rather die than lose Krishna. So she's contemplating what to do because my brother has influenced everybody to make a marriage arrangement between myself and a person who I'll never marry. I'll never marry Shishupal. Forget Shishupal. So she wrote, she decided, with the consultation of one of her dear friends pictured here, to write Krishna a letter. So a reflection, supposing there's an obstacle in something that you wish to do for Krishna or with Krishna and someone standing in the way. How strong is your desire to be true to your desire in your relationship with Krishna? We'll meet those challenges from time to time in life. Rukmini met hers and she began composing a very beautiful letter, short but very beautiful. Oh, beauty of the worlds, 
having heard of your qualities, which enter the ears of those who hear and remove their bodily distress, having also heard of your beauty, which fulfills all the visual desires of those who see, I have fixed my shameless mind upon you, O Krishna. Now we were emphasizing yesterday that <clears throat> she's only heard about Krishna, but she's given her heart to Krishna, just from hearing about him. We have some ways to go, right? Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur writes in his commentary, Rukmini's mood is this. I will express the feelings of my heart to you. After you have heard this, you may accept me or neglect me, favor me or reject me. Nevertheless, depending on whether I obtain you or not, I will e either live happily forevermore or else die this very day or the next. For one in my condition, there's no question of fear or shame. Therefore, I speak now. Then this is, um, the, the person who put this together is Shatarupa. It was designed to be a little interactive or a little some lesson building as you go along. So here's a lesson. When you're approaching someone about anything, you respect that they may have an idea that's different than your idea. Just had some exchange with somebody today where there's a particular person, they're very congenial and convivial and very happy until someone says something they don't want to hear and then all of a sudden when they hear something they don't want to hear, they shut down and the relationship gets interrupted. Some time passes and it may make a bridge again in that relationship, but it just with this particular person, they don't like to hear stuff they don't like. They don't like, want to hear. But in, in any any substantial relationship, is you allow that another person is going to have a different position or a feeling or opinion or something than yourself. She is fixed upon Krishna, but. He, she wants to know what he wants. Request means that we respect and allow the other person's freedom to say yes or no. O oh, Achuta, your beauty, remember she hasn't seen him yet, but she's heard about him from Narada and perhaps others. Your beauty and qualities are the two causes of my mind's becoming shameless. And my two ears are also its cause. Therefore, both you and I are at fault. Therefore, you cannot criticize me, and I cannot criticize you. She's very clever, huh? Vishwanath writes, imagining that Krishna may respond, oh, other men have attractive forms and qualities, so why do you find fault with them? So Rukmini continues, Please do not speak like this, Krishna. Then she mentions Krishna's unique qualities. Having entered the ears of attentive young women, your wonderful qualities completely destroy all their pains, both subtle and gross. Tell me, what other man exists who has qualities like you? That's commentary by Vishwanath. Just massaging or expanding on the mood that she's expressing. Oh, Mukunda. You are equal only to yourself. In lineage, character, beauty, knowledge, youthfulness, wealth, and influence. 
this painting is a BBT painting, very beautiful. It's Krishna seeing his own reflection in the marble in one of the palaces in Dwarka. And when he sees his reflection, he's stunned at the beauty that he sees in the reflection. Oh, lion among men. Krishna smashing Kamsa. You delight the minds of all mankind. What aristocratic, sober-minded, and marriageable girl of a good family would not choose you as her husband when the proper time has come. Therefore, my dear Lord, I have chosen you as my husband and I surrender myself to you. Please come swiftly, O Almighty One, and make me your wife. My dear lotus-eyed Lord, let Shishupal never touch the hero's portion like a jackal stealing the property of a lion. It's good to, I meant to start with this. This is Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. Now we don't have the intrigue like this of Lakshmi becoming the consort of Narayan. There's no obstacle, there's no Shishupal, there's no intrigue. And the pastimes of Krishna are filled with obstacles, hardships, and overcoming the hardships, and victory. So it's, it's, it's very thrilling. But we should bear in mind, she's the goddess of fortune. So that the Leela of Krishna and his, his associates, in this case, Rukmini, or the goddess of fortune, Rukmini, Sri, as she's sometimes identified, is um, very wonderful. In Bhagavad Gita, chapter 12, Krishna says, those who worship me giving up all their activities unto me and being devoted to me without deviation, engaged in devotional service and always meditating upon me, having fixed their minds upon me, O son of Prita, for them I am the swift deliverer. Well, Rukmini certainly has her mind fixed on Krishna. And she's not a yogi, but she's the goddess of fortune. Her having heard from Narada and others about Krishna, she's fixed. She's fixed. If I have sufficiently worshipped the Supreme Personality of Godhead by pious work, sacrifices, charity, rituals, and vows, and also by worshipping the demigods, brahmanas, and gurus, then may Gadagraja come and take my hand and not Damagosha's son or anyone else. Vyavasayatmika Buddhi. She's fixed. And in the relationship of his wife. Commentary says, Rukmini felt that no one could obtain Lord Krishna by the efforts of a single lifetime. Therefore, she earnestly pointed out the pious activities she had performed in that life and previous lives, hoping to convince Sri Krishna to come. But her letter's not over yet. What are some qualifications that get us entry into a university. This is the qualification. What are some qualifications that gets us entry into a job? What are some qualifications that get us a worthy relationship in this world? Are we perhaps approaching our service relationships with Krishna in the same mood 
or method? What are some flaws in this method? Now we're not going to do an interactive session, but I'll just pause and let you think about it. I just got a letter today, yesterday, and then again today. Somebody that I know that graduated from um, Texas A&M, moved back to India, got married, and some time has passed, and now they just wrote yesterday, they got a job offer from the state, something to do with the state government and uh, licensing people for doing something to do with, I think, food handling or something like that. And you know, it's a professor position, is starting them with a tenured professor, professor position in a government post. I don't know how the government has, because anyway, training people that how, what's the requirement for by law for stuff. Just today, they got a, another appointment for an interview for uh, uh, the federal government. You know, there's material qualifications to get appointments to a job like either one of those. So what's, do we, do we approach our service to Krishna the same way? This is what the question is being asked. How do we make ourselves qualified for a relationship with Krishna? And it's different. I mean, th there's no harm supposing Supposing you have um, your your good artist, so then you can be engaged in doing art for Krishna. Supposing you're good at accounting, so you can do accounting for Krishna. Supposing something, something, something. So there's there's qualifications to do some service. But here's something that Prabhupada said to one of his disciples. Uh, in the beginning. But even when, when Prabhupada, uh, we'll go back. When Prabhupada, Prabhupada received an invitation to go to Japan before he came to America. It's a long story. Um, in, in writing, there was someone uh, in Japan that was organizing a, a big conference called uh, Celebration of the Human Spirit. And Prabhupada got an invitation to be a speaker. And so, just to give some idea, because this is a short class, so I'm taking time to speak expand. <laughs> I hope it's okay. Uh, he wanted to fulfill the order of Bhakti Siddhanta, to take the teaching of Lord Chaitanya to all parts of the world, specifically to the English part, parts of the world, but he was ready to go wherever he was, he had an opportunity. So Japan's a great place. It's outside of India for sure. And so he made a plan and was executing his plan. And the plan was chapter tw 19 and 20 from 10th Canto, is the description of the autumn season. And Prabhupada knew that people from the Orient, they like to understand things and have a deep appreciation for nature. So he wanted to give a, so he wrote a, a 20,000 page essay following those verses from chapter 20, giving teachings about life. The, Bhagavats, the Bhagavatam's message it never got published during his lifetime because he didn't have money to publish it and he didn't have money to get for the airfare to go to Japan, although he had a letter from the organizer of the event, particularly, we'll take care of your accommodation, we'll take care of your food, but he, had, he didn't have the airfare. But part of his plan was he asked the organizer, 
Can you identify an artist that can make drawings that match each of the verses? Because Prabhupada understood visuals help understanding a message. So when he came to America, so later, 20 years later, someone found the manuscript and pub Tamal Krishnaraj published it in Hong Kong, BBT Hong Kong. And it was The Light of the Bhagavad. Wonderful book. And in the course of creating the book, Tamal Krishnaraj asked for a very celebrated artist in mainland China to do the artwork. And he was the art director and she was the artist. And she came back and forth between her place in Hong Kong and they worked it out and the book got published by BBT Hong Kong. And then eventually, so the point is the artwork was an essential part of his giving lessons. So when he came to America, he also wanted art to go along with his books. And he also wanted artists to make paintings of Panchatattva. Because in the beginning, there was no deity worship. It was Panchatattva and, the, and Prabhupada and Bhakti Siddhanta. He called it a Guru Garanga altar. So the devotees were engaged in making paintings of Panchatattva. And one of the devotees asked Prabhupada, do you want us to take art lessons? And Prabhupada's answer was, that's not necessary. If you paint with devotion for Krishna, then Krishna will give you the ability and you'll make very nice artwork. And so it happened. The BBT artists became it was very crude at the, because this particular devotee that told me the story, they never had a paintbrush in their hand before. And Prabhupada gave them that service with devotion to make artwork. And, you know, some of the artists later did take art lessons, but the ability to make nice artwork was not to going to art school or the ability to write, because Prabhupada wanted his d disciples to write, wasn't that you had, you know, some literary degree or something like that. It was devotion. And following the path of previous great devotees that were nice at writing, you study their writings and that's something. Sending. So, what's the qualification for serving Krishna? Supposing you want to cook for Krishna, it's nice to learn from somebody that knows how to cook for Krishna. Prabhupada taught the devotees how to cook for Krishna, but the most important part was not mixing this and that. And the most important part was consciousness and cleanliness. It was very, very clear about, because he trained devotees. He trained devotees in Krishna consciousness initially in the kitchen. That's how Kirtananda was trained in the kitchen, Prabhupada gave him the opportunity to learn cooking directly from Prabhupada. Then he became one of the cooks, and then he trained other people, etc., etc. Just like you like Murdunga playing. So I learned the little bit that I know from one devotee that, that Prabhupada trained. His name was Chandanacharya, and uh, I remember very clearly, sitting in the temple room and just having Murdunga classes. And then going out on Harinam Sankirtan and playing Murdunga for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and, hours and just the, the, the basic beats. That's how I learned. In, in service and devotion, that's how you learn. So that's on this slide. The, the the approach to serving Krishna nicely is not, I'll learn, uh, I'll become a PhD in something or other and then I'll be able to serve Krishna nicely. Not how it works. So what is Krishna's relationship with us or to us as spirit souls? 
And how much does it mean to us that we have a relationship with him? How do we become qualified to reconnect, revive, and retain that relationship? And according to Lord Brahma, it's just being alive in your relationship, jiveta, mukti pade, so swadaya bhak. Okay. The qualities that Rukmini is exemplifying is just a very singular, dedicated, focused plan to be in her relationship with Krishna eternally. Now, we're, we're not there yet. Because the, the, the obstacle is we're attached to other things. We're attached to the temporary. Attached to enjoying the temporary. That's the obstacle. Okay, so now she has this plan and she knows that there's an obstacle. The obstacle is there are others that want her to marry Shishupal. So um, she makes the plan. At the upcoming wedding, she's got a little list, checklist. You should first enter the city unseen because if you come with big troops, then it's going to make a big stir. Once having entered the city, you should surround yourself with your military commanders to show your strength. Very strategic. Then, if you don't do this, then it will be difficult to enter the city quickly for the troops will accost you outside the city. Now, she's planning a certain type of marriage. And I'm going to just read something that's from Krishna book on the, the, this particular type of marriage that she's planning. According to Vedic convention, there are eight kinds of marriage. In the first class marriage system, the parents of the bride and bridegroom arrange the marriage date. Then, in royal sty style, the bridegroom goes to the house of the bride, and in the presence of brahmanas, priests, and relatives, the bride is given in charity to the bridegroom. Besides this, there are other systems, such as the Gandharva and Rakshasa marriages. Krishna married Rukmini according to the Rakshasa system, that is, kidnapping her in the presence of many rivals, like Shishupal, Jarasandha, and Shalva. While Rukmini was being given in charity to Shishupal, Krishna snatched her from the marriage arena, exactly as Garuda snatched a pot of nectar from the demigods. Rukmini, the only daughter of King Bhishmaka, was exquisitely beautiful. She was known as Ruchi Ranana, which means one who has a beautiful face expanded like a lotus flower. Ruchi Ranana. Okay, so there's how to get into the city in three parts. After entering the city, however, you can say that you have come just to see the splendor of my marriage ceremony and then the army will have no reason to fight with you. Very carefully laid out plan. Then, you can whisk me away at your leisure. If they suspect an undesirable turn of events and start fighting with you, however, you should show your heroism. Then, you should forcefully kidnap me, the reward for your show of strength. Battle plan. Since I will be staying within the inner chamber of the palace, you may wonder, how can I carry you away without killing some of your relatives? But I shall tell you a way. There is a grand procession to honor the royal family's deity. And in this procession, the new bride goes outside the city. 
to visit the goddess Girija. You can kidnap me from there. Then, submission. So this is um, the Brahmana was given this letter from Rukmini and the Brahmana very carefully came before Krishna uh, and was ready to present this message. My dear Brahmana, I'm very glad to hear that Rukmini is eager to marry me since I am also eager to get her hand. My mind is always absorbed in thoughts of the daughter of Bhishmaka, and sometimes I cannot sleep at night because I am thinking of her. Remember, he ran up the mountain and made his way hurriedly to Dwaraka because he is anticipating his time to marry Rukmini. And here comes the messenger. And I know of her brother Rukmi's opposition to my marrying her. Therefore, I must kidnap her after crushing all the low-class kings just as one might generate fire from wood by friction. Now, Bhishmaka's headquarters or capital is not so far from Dorka. And so the Brahmana went by foot, Krishna went by chariot. He immediately set out for Vidarbha, which he reached after one night's travel. Now back to King Bhishmaka. Out of attachment to his son, even against his own desire, Bhishmaka succumbed to the sway of Rukmi, who made elaborate arrangements and received all guests with due respects. Shishupal's supporters, Shalva, Jarasandha, Dantavakra, and Vidurata, all came along with Pondraka and thousands of other kings. And they had a plan. If Krishna comes here with Balaram and the other Yadus to steal the bride, we shall band together and fight him. Thus those envious kings went to the wedding with their entire armies and a full complement of military conveyances. So the excitement is about to begin. Now here's Rukmini back in the capital of King Bhishmaka. The lovely daughter of Bhishmaka anxiously awaited the arrival of Krishna, but when she did not see the Brahmana return, she thought as follows. Alas, my wedding is to take place when the night ends. How unlucky I am, lotus-eyed Krishna does not come. Perhaps the faultless Lord, even while preparing to come here, saw something contemptible in me. As she thought in this way, she closed her tear-filled eyes, remembering that there was still time. So there's this nice teaching given by Rupa Goswami in Nectar of Devotion. The Sanskrit is Ashabandha called Hope Against Hope. So how this might apply to us is we may have some aspiration for restoring our Krishna consciousness, etc., etc. But what's our qualification and we take stock of our qualification and we don't have qualification we have disqualification but not qualification so what's there, what hope is there but then Rupa Goswami <laughs> explains the hope is that Krishna is kind 
although my aspiration is so feeble and I'm so disqualified in so many ways, etc., my hope is that Krishna is very kind and he'll see that little spark of desire and he'll be very kind and he'll take me by the hand and help me. That's the life of a devotee, especially one that's being honest with themselves about what qualification. Take a look. Look inside what qualification is there. But Krishna is very kind. So there she is. It's the 11th hour. Big festival going on. Just then... Purest of learned brahmanas, following Krishna's order, came to see the divine princess Rukmini in the inner chamber of the palace. He had privileges because he's a brahmana. The brahmana then announced Krishna's arrival. <sighs> Krishna has come. Princess Vaidarbi was overjoyed to learn of Krishna's arrival. Not finding anything at hand suitable to offer the brahmana, she simply bowed down to him. Now, it's part of Vedic culture. We'll, we find it again and again and again in Ramayana when someone brings a good message. Like Kaikei, when she got the message, that Ram is going to be anointed as the prince regent. Uh, she wanted to give Mantra a gift. Mantra threw it to the ground. When, when Ram was given passage across the Ganga, he wanted to give the boatman a gift, but he didn't have anything to give. So... It's just part of culture. The, these little points are important. For cultured people, at least, it's important. You receive something, some kindness, and you reciprocate with that kindness. It's just culture. It's just culture. According to Ramayana, it's, it's the essence of Sanatana Dharma. Because what are what is it that we're receiving? We're receiving from Krishna everything that we have. And how do you reciprocate with Krishna for everything that you have? And if you don't, it's a dharma, or it's against the, the essence of the living being. So she simply bowed down to him. And the next day, there's Girija the family deity, and Rukmini is going with her entourage of friends, going to pay respects to the deity, looking this way, looking that way, looking this way. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? So Krishna shows up tomorrow night. <laughs> or tomorrow midday anyways. So that part three is coming attractions. Okay, let's see if there's some comments or discussion, whatever anybody would like to bring up. Feel free. Are these flowers from your garden? Yeah? Very beautiful. They're probably fragrant too, right? Huh? They're big. What's the name? Chrysanthemum? Peony, 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 okay. Discussion? 
श्री कृष्ण महाराज महाराज वी नो दैट जय एंड विजय हैड द थ्री बर्थ्स एस हिरण कशिपू हिरण याक्षा एंड देन रावण कुंभकर्ण एंड देन दिस द्वापर युग एन कृष्ण वॉज देयर एस शिशुपाल एंड दांत वक्रा when you just see the transition from one uh age to the other you see that their powers are less from you no know, hiranyakashipu to ravana yes and then again sishupal also is we hear that he is warrior but not so great in that sense in that time so is it just the yuga that they appear in that makes them less and less powerful or uh, yes uh, primarily If you're interested to hear the description of that sequence I have it in my computer but it's that where it's drawn from is um Rupa Goswami's the Lagu Bhagavatamrita from one birth to the next birth to the next birth and the 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 deterioration but also the qualities they're mm. described okay. also yeah. another thing maharaj uh, in the first two births as the uh, demons they are brothers but in this particular uh, uh, the third appearance as demons they are not they're they're not, friends they're, but not brothers they're cousins uh, any any reason given by our acharyas uh, not that i'm aware of maybe okay. there is i don't i'm not aware of any reason given by your charyas why they're not brothers is there something back there do you have an answer to that question no prajna oh, okay just now you told me about deterioration of from birth to birth like i wanted to know how many births like you know de- the cycle of life and what is called deterioration meant exactly in that i don't understand the question just now you, you spoke about deterioration from birth to birth in all the lives who uh one of the rakshasas the two demons shishupal yeah that okay So you, what what's your question now? So uh what is meant by deterioration of life? What's the duration of life? Deterioration, deterioration. Det- why is there deterioration? Yeah, what exactly is deterioration in life? What is it that deteriorates? Yeah. From age to age? From time to time or life to life? Well, as a human being. Okay, okay. The reference here is Satya Yoga Treta Yuga, Dwarpa Yuga, now Kali Yuga. The duration of life changes from Yuga to Yuga. It's not just these, but these three personalities. It's the ages, the, quali- the higher qualities, r- refined character deteriorates in each age. So, for example... it's common the way prabhupad would express this commonly was in during the the first of the four yugas the duration of life is yeah and then you just delete a zero and you get 10000 and you get 1000 and you get 100 so by multiples of 10 they diminish of duration but also the qualities of goodness diminish and diminish and diminish so the main thing is qualities of goodness diminish that is that is the duration of the life of human well it the, the, they're not it's not exactly cause and effect it's just, they're just their symptoms the symptoms diminish the 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 quality of compassion diminishes then how to keep them up how to practice bhakti oh that is bhakti is the only way you can keep them up I don't follow what you're asking. I'm sorry. Please, um, Take your mask on, d- down and maybe I'll hear you better. No, just remove your mask so I can hear you oh, better. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I want to know like what is the opposite for being 
deteriorated step by step in the yugas or ages what are the things that will uplift humans without deterioration from time to time well, the, the, uh, I, if, if i understand your question correctly each of the four ages has a process most recommended for that age just like a physician with this disease there's this medicine and treatment and that disease another medicine another treatment etc so for satya yoga and treta yoga dwarpa yoga and kali yoga so there are particular processes meant for achieving spiritual perfection and, and elevation of consciousness so you know what those four are don't you okay in satya yoga it's dhyate meditation oh. meditation and and treta yoga is yagya performance of sacrifice in dwarpa yoga it's archana or the deity worship temple worship and then in this age it's hari kirtan the congregational the chanting of the holy name of the lord as the primary means for achieving purification and elevation of consciousness thank you that's what you're looking for in you, in you, you got more questions i can tell <laughs> <laughs> this young man over here has something we have something online too right okay mask yeah hey krishna guru when i die of a question that little uh, louder a little louder Hi Krishna Guru Maharaj I have a question um why did Rukmini Mata take birth in like a family where um, they like and so Lord Krishna Oh Bhishma ka had no problem it's her brother And and why does it w- w- this is she's the goddess of fortune mind you she's not just you know a, a jiva she's Shakti Tattva she's the goddess of fortune So she's taking birth in a situation that augments Krishna's pastimes. Krishna enjoys rescuing Rukmini. Rukmini enjoys being rescued by Krishna. And so it's it's the the happiness and it's the rasa of Krishna's kidnapping Rukmini. And then the other queens, each one some intrigue and you know some challenge and krishna overcomes and he enjoys it's his sporting pastimes so she's assisting in his sporting pastimes in a particular way and boy is she clever she nailed the whole situation perfectly okay online Hare Krishna Maharaj I have a question from Shama Gopika Didi Hare Krishna Maharaj what is the significance of Rukmini Devi uh, saying that she will die the next day if Krishna rejects her It's 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 her mood of exclusive devotion and attachment if the ob- if the object when when desire is very 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 that's three varies intense the person who is having such an intense desire feels if i cannot achieve this objective this goal of my uh spiritual life how will i maintain my life my life is this goal is is the my relationship with you not attaining my relationship with you how can it? chaitanya mahaprabhu had a similar how will i maintain my life so it's intense it's an expression of intense affection intense uh, intense attachment that's the meaning something else oh, is there something yes no okay anything else in the room Hmm. 
Maharaj, one of the reasons uh, we hear when uh, Jay Vijay got the curse from the four Kumaras is uh, Lakshmi Devi uh, is also unhappy with them for uh, for denying entry into see uh, Lord Vishnu at one point and uh, Lord Vishnu to satisfy her you know this curse also is one of the reasons as mentioned by our Acharya I remember yes so now if, uh, goddess of fortune is Rukmini Devi and Sishupal being a uh, Jay Vijay's uh, uh, expansion. In, yeah, um, is that so? She having attraction to Krishna is very natural because of goddess of fortune. Is there some of the shouldn't say animosity, but some um, she has some uh, not so good feelings about Jay Vijay. So did that carry no, over no, here? No, 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 no. It's Krishna and Krishna only for her. That's the goddess of fortune. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you for a wonderful and enlightening uh, session, and especially the collection of uh, all the pastimes. I don't have any specific question, Maharaj. I just like to. Uh, one, one statement here is uh, comment on one of the very nice topic which I picked today in the class is like uh, just like in the material world we strive so much to develop our skill sets to qualify for a job and yeah. for this so how much intense we are to qualify in Krishna consciousness yeah is the internal test that we need to yeah so that is something but the the, the you, according to Rupa Goswami mentioned mentioned written about specifically in padyavali is one can say it softly by saying intense desire to have that relationship with krishna or more explicitly it's lolium which means greed so in material life greed is bad it's excessive and in spiritual life, it's good. In fact, it's the qualification. Now, how, how does it, being being around somebody that's greedy for whatever it is that they're greedy for? Generally speaking, I'll speak for myself. It's kind of uncomfortable when somebody's greedy because they're oblivious to social circumstances and behaviors and, you know, anything. Because they're, it's like obsessive. But the spiritual qualification, persons don't lose their grace. Look at what, look at Rukmini. She, she hasn't lost her bearings. She hasn't lost her char character. She's fixed. So that's a spiritual qualification. Mm -hmm. Anything back there? Yes? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, I have a comment. You have to speak louder. <clears throat> About Rukmini's personality, hearing yesterday and today, um, it, she, it's just so she's admirable. Like, first, she, she she's saying about her shameless mind and submitting to Krishna, and the next minute she's finding fault because Krishna attracted her. That's what the fault is. And then also she's giving a so nice plan to Krishna. So... Her personality is so dynamic. I just uh, wanted to comment on that. Well, transcendental emotion 
is spontaneous and very fluid. Mm. You know, if you you're remarking on her, the fluidity of her emotions. What about Srimadhi Radharani? Whew. And then Radharani's associates. Ooh. The, the, you know, the intensity is there, and dynamic and spontaneous is also there. So it, it goes, and the expressions, the emotions and the words that they speak are uh, wonderful. You know, extreme, in one sense extreme, but very wonderful, because the essence of that wonderfulness is they're a, they're a strong attachment for Krishna. Is that? Yes. When yes. you're okay. Maharaj, I have a question regarding that uh, reflection. You got to speak loud, speak directly <coughs> into the microphone because somehow this speaker isn't. But it's not, it's not working properly. It's working, but not effectively. Not effectively. So maybe. For the rest of the time, we can see what can be done about that, because... Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. That's better. Mar Mar Maharaj, my question is about the reflection question. Uh, what is our qualification to enter into the relationship with Krishna, or how we can cultivate that qualification? Uh, from the class, uh, I kind of understood few points, but at the end, it's just being alive in the relationship. Well, that, that's... That alive comes from a verse in Brahma's prayers to Krishna. But in Rukmini's pastime, it's the fixed consciousness that she had. But in our case, we don't have the, uh, my case, we don't have a qualification, but just well, having... You cultivate. The... You have something and that's something you cultivate. That's what, like growing a garden or growing peonies. <laughs> Didn't start like this. It took some cultivation. Who knows how long? How many years it took to get these guys? A few years, probably. Huh? He actually got this in the garden by the producer. Oh, it was already here. Okay. Somebody cultivated. <laughs> it takes, you know, it's just like it's like it's like bhakti life. It's it takes some care, care, nurturing, and you know, um, patience. Just make sure the seed is good. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'm going to tell a little story because it fits. Uh, my father uh, was an accountant by by his profession. And uh, he was also, by his nature, he liked being outdoors. So we had like an outdoorsy kind of family. And one of the things that he liked to do was gardening. Kind of like therapeutic, I think. <laughs> if I'm sitting at a counting desk for so many hours. <laughs> so one year, I remember, uh, he bought a peach tree, put planted in the backyard. So I was a little boy, but you know, this little girl's age, looked up at the peach tree. Where are the peaches? And I was told, be patient. Next year. A little taller, you know, where are the peaches? Be patient. Third year. And then finally the fourth year, then the third year there was little green things, but they didn't get beyond little green things. And then the fourth year, they became peaches, and they were really nice peaches. But it took four years, and that's just like 
growing a peach tree. So, uh, making our connection with Krishna takes some determination, some nurturing, and some patience. I know somebody, and I had to, you know, appreciate their enthusiasm, and also, you know, their impatience wasn't a, that's a good qualification. Impatience is, is a disqualification. Peaches don't come on peach trees just because you want peaches. <laughs> Behind you? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, they say uh, Krishna is Patita Pavana. Uh, so in that scenario, like even the fallen, fallen soul, he will uplift them. Krishna is so merciful. So how we can uh, if krishna is patita pavana so should we, we still we should think about purifying ourselves oh, or yeah. or since krishna is patita pavana he will take care of us you have children yeah i do <laughs> do you care about your children yes i do just let them do anything they want to do because you you'll take care of them because they'll just, you know they don't have to be trained or you know anything it's because you'll take care of them is that good parenting you don't do it like that you you instruct and you know you you you, you allow for the children to be children but anyway we're children we're krishna's children but we're supposed to you know learn and try to serve and uh, you know adjust and purify and realign and you know, all those things mm. it's it's a relationship yeah he'll pick us up but we should also want to be you know de desirable person to be picked up <laughs> By sincerity and and our make you know demonstrating that we want Krishna's association more and more and more. It's two. It's a relationship. It's two ways. Does that answer your question? Yeah, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I think we're ready to end. Anything final? Okay. 